Okay, uh, very good afternoon. Uh, it's already afternoon here now in Sierra Leone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be part of this uh, uh, World Conference. I am Patrick Masakoy. I am the Deputy Secretary General of the Sierra Leone Two Ball Association. Uh, my presentation here is on the social science approach of two ball. And this is a typical case study of what we are doing in Sierra Leone. Okay, uh, thanks very much. Um, as uh, being said by my previous speaker, who is the vice president, of course, uh, we consider two ball as a social science sport. Very much interestingly, because uh, when the ball is being thrown for player fair play from one uh, uh, player to another, uh, the ball goes across the net. It is like extending an olive uh, branch to somebody that you want to play with. And the game is being guided by standard rules because you have to play by the rules. The players, officials, and spectators are protected by these rules. Players are required to demonstrate the spirit of sportsmanship during and even after the game. And that is the spirit. Next slide, please. Now, what sport has done with respect to peace? And this is where we are hinging. We are going to really cliff our my presentation too. Example of sport and peace in Africa. Uh, this span all the way from uh, the, the the war we had in Sierra Leone and also in our neighboring country Liberia. The current president of Liberia happens to play a vital role. By then, he was in active. Uh, of football. He was contracted by the International Committee of the Red Cross in order for him to use football to spread knowledge and understanding on the law of war. That is equating the rules that has to be guided uh, while you are in the field of play and also informing those who are combatants in order for them to adhere to the rules of war. So that particular game was played in the national st stadium in Liberia, wherein they had the two, uh, two games. One was played without rule and the other one was played with rule. Therefore, this, uh, uh, the public was sensitized that if every one of us can adhere to the rules of the game, then there would be fair play. If at all the combatants at that particular time adhere to the rules of the law, uh, of war, then it means uh, civilians will not be killed and only those who are in active combat would have to be attacked. So that was like an equation of uh, what uh, the sports, the rules around sport and the rules around the theater of war signifies. Next slide, please. Furthermore, uh, another player, a professional player, Didier Drogba from a from a Ivory uh, Coast, also used his profession as a footballer in order to hurt the war that was raging out in the uh, Ivory Coast. Then the former Secretary General, uh, UN Secretary General Ban Ki Moon, also said, "Sport has become a world language." a common denominator that breaks down all the walls and barriers. It is a worldwide industry whose practice can have a widespread impact. That tells us that the social science of sport can mitigate violence, can mitigate even disaster, if at all we adhere to the rules of the game. Now, the social science of uh, true ball sports. We want to look at throw ball as a tool for dialogue for peace, wherein it can also enhance everyone, everywhere, if at all we adhere to 
the rules of the game. Now, let us look at this particular equation. For example, we look at throw ball and dialogue for P. The description here has to do with the target group. Throw ball targets the players and dialogue for peace tag targets the concerned parties. The meeting place for throw ball is the pitch of play. And the meeting place for dialogue for peace is either at a house or an agreed uh, uh, environment. Then the conduct, code of conduct for throw ball are the rules of the game, wherein dialogue for peace are the laws binding the binding the law uh, binding the meeting and also the engagement for those who are concerned then the judges the judges for two ball are the referees and the judges for dialogue for peace are the mediators their identity the common identity for two ball uh is the jersey that is being used the costume being used in the field of play we are in the Identity for the dialogue for peace are normal dress that is being worn by those uh, involved. Then the community members are for throw ball. They are the spectators who will be watching the game. And for dialogue for peace are the individuals, the members, and the friends of those who are involved in it. So uh, equating that of throw ball and dialogue for peace are really very, very common. They have a common ground where they can train. Now, the social science approach of throw ball. We have got core values that throw ball look at. One has to be neutral. Uh, whatever game you are playing, the officials have to be very, very neutral. They have to take that into consideration in, in order to foster a fair play. Of course, they have to be impartial, no discrimination in the process of playing the game. It is universal for the game, for the rules, the rules that uh, uh, that is being adhered to or respected in Africa is the same rule in any other part of the world. And it has to be diversified, meaning even those living with disabilities are also part of the game. They have to play it. The aged, the young, they have to be part of it. So what are we currently looking at? We want to look at throw ball replacing weapon in order to extend or to foster peace for everyone everywhere. So throw ball can be used in order to replace weapon so that it can create an enabling environment in order for uh, community members to live in peace and using throw ball in order to mitigate violence in communities now the trouble sci uh, social science part of has to be done by using strategies so one of the strategy here is trouble social science drama so there are two scenarios to that scenario one scenario one has to do with uh playing the game without rules so what are we going to look at? We look at a game be played without referee, a game be played without rules, a game be played without teams wearing jersey that would identify them. And infringement or disadvantage opponent is applicable in this first rule, in this first drama. Then supporters can even jump into the field to aid their team. Mind you, the game should not be played more than 10 minutes because it will be very, very chaotic. So after the 10 minutes of play, then we go to the next scenario, wherein the play would have to play between, the game will have now have to play between two teams. And during that particular play, there would be referees. The rules of the game has to be applied then the team would be identified with their different jerseys and whistles, cards, and decision of the referees would be enforced for any infringement during the play. So that's the second part of the drama uh, that has to play. And when that is being done, then uh, 
the spectator will not be asked. What did they see in the first game for them to explain? What was good about the first play? What was bad about the first play? What would happen if the first play is not mitigated? So they would have now to ask. This is the point where we want to explore dialogue for peace. At the end of the second play, the spectators will be asked also what they saw in the second play. What was good about the second play? And what was bad about the second play? After these two scenarios, the spectators will further be asked, including the players themselves, what are the causes of the first play? That is, the first play that, that, that occurred without rules. Then what would be the impact of the first play? What can prevent the first play uh, during the, uh, the, the action? What could be used in order to prevent that? That is, if at all uh, uh, the, the, the game that is being played, if it, we have seen signs and symptoms, what could be done by the community members in order to prevent it? Then what would be the role of community stakeholders in order to prevent the first play? Because it would have to be very chaotic, because there would be no rule, and there would be, I mean, no uh, blowing of whistle or clad uh, cards being displayed in order for, for, for those that will be infringing I mean, foul or whatever against the rule of the game. So, at the end of this, we have to now bring on board, and the community members will have to now bring on board suggestions, equating those suggestions in their community that they are living. That is, we have seen this particular play. So, do we experience such in our communities? Do we experience uh, violations or do we experience infringement by stakeholders or by community members in our community? So what can we do in order for that not to happen, for that not to happen? What would be the role of community stakeholders? What would be the role for even community members, even if you are not an authority, but what would be your role in order for this type of thing to be mitigated in communities? So this can now be used in order to prevent tribal conflict, political violence, youth violence, religious violence, and even land dispute. So this is telling us that we can use the game of throw ball in order to raise awareness, to strengthen knowledge and understanding of community people which respect of signs and symptoms that are occurring in our community. So that by doing this, it will mitigate violence. Violence that has to do with tribal, violence that has to do with politics, violence that has to do with religion, and violence that has to do with our land dispute. So as I conclude, we are now moving towards our general election. So we want to use trouble in order to preach peace, in order for you, for us to use dialogue for peace as one of the peace, uh, peace approaches or strategies in order for us to mitigate violence. This is our thoughts, and this is what we want to use. And thanks very much for this game that we have introduced in our country, because currently we have got key stakeholders, teams, and participants who are members of the national security apparatus in Sierra Leone. That is the police, the military, and uh, I am coming from the angle of the Sierra Leone Scout Association. And we want to also use this particular uh, social sciences drama in order for us to raise awareness in our community so that we can go through our election peacefully. And the election will be happening on the 24th of June, 2023. I want to thank you very much for your attention. And this is the strategy. This is the social science drama.
of trouble that we want to use and we want to also share with our colleagues out there uh, across the world. Thank you very much.